So you might be wondering, uh, I am an American, so why am I going to be saying a bunch of things about Nordic LARPing at the Nordic LARP talks about things that are happening entirely in America by Americans for other Americans? This is a reasonable question to be asking, uh, and I understand why you might ask it. Now, America does unfortunately not have a rich tradition of LARPing with children, LARPing for children, places that children can LARP. There are a few, however. One in particular is the Wayfinder Experience. It's a summer camp in upstate New York. It's a wonderful place. I encourage you all to visit. It is run by these two wonderful women, Curran McDonald and Trina Bode-Peterson. And I will admit I am wildly biased because here's a picture of me at the age of 14 uh, at my first Wayfinder camp well over a decade ago. So this is where I got my start. We run uh, day camps for younger kids as well as overnight camps for older kids. Our camps are generally a week, two weeks long, and each camp has anywhere from one to three separate LARPs. Each LARP is only about four hours long, but we have all different genres from post-apocalyptic to modern day to historical to high fantasy, all kinds of different stuff. Some of our games do use foam swords with very simple mechanics that aren't much more complicated than if you get hit with a sword, you scream in pain and fall down because your blood is falling out. Someone hit you with a sword. Those things are sharp and they hurt. We don't have numbers or hit points or things like that. We have very few non-diegetic elements. And for the most part, the games are very based around what you see is what you get. We run all kinds of different emotional tones. We have horror games. We have epic adventures. We have deeply intimate personal games. We have games for younger kids. We have games about saving the world. We have lots of different styles. Primarily, thematically, what we focus on is personal empowerment, self-discovery, games where often a lot of the children are playing because they really want to be sad and experience what sadness feels like. Or maybe they're playing because they want to experience what playing someone of a different gender feels like, someone from a different part of the world, someone from a different world entirely. These are games about exploration and identity, and that is a core part of what we do. That also means that we've only got four hours in game out of potentially a whole week. We have a lot of our time that is out of game. Workshopping and community building is a core part of what we do. And a lot of our time is dedicated to things like theater workshops, sword fighting workshops, crafting workshops. This is a camper who built his own weapons at camp, which most of our stuff is provided in our big old work, in our big old warehouse. We have a lot of experience doing things like bringing people together and bringing communities together. And that is a huge piece of what we emphasize, that when we all come together as a community and get to know each other out of game first, by the time the game starts, we have a deep sense of trust built up with one another. We care about one, one another. So when we have these games where we're making each other cry and making each other miserable and hunting each other through the woods and so on and so forth, after the game is over, we can all still hug it out and know that we are all friends and we all care about each other very deeply. And this is a core piece of what we do. Now, a lot of this might sound familiar to a lot of you. We have been doing this uh, starting in about 1985. And for most of that time, we were in isolation. We didn't interact with other LARPs. We knew they existed. We knew they were out there. We didn't really talk to them. Every so often, one of us would go to another LARP, and we would go, oh, this is different. This is... We will restrain from saying it is, it is bad, but because we are in a very specific thing, it does not fit what we expect. It does not fit what we are used to. And therefore, we are surprised by it uh, and may judge it strongly based on our expectations. And then in the last few years, we discovered all of you. And we discovered the Nordic LARP world, and we went, oh my god, there are people who are doing what we're doing. We started reading the Knutpunk books and going, oh my god, there are people who are talking about the theories we're talking about. We started getting involved. We found things like the American freeform scene. And we were like, oh my god, there are even people in the States who are doing things like what we're doing. This is miraculous. And recently, really in the last year or so, we've even started coming over across the pond. Uh, mostly it has been those of us who grew up at Wayfinder and are now adults, but there are even some young people. Actually, one of our campers went to 1942 and played the child in the family that was doing all of the switchboarding. It was awesome. So where did this start? It's in the Hudson Valley in upstate New York, which I realize they do have to give a bit of geography here because I am not an American. I am not going to assume that people know American geography. This is north of New York City. New York State is much larger than just New York City. It's a decently sized state. Specifically, it's in the Hudson Valley, which is the home of Woodstock. You may have heard of it. It's a festival. 
It's also a town. Woodstock is a lovely little center where lots of hippies come together. It is a, the Hudson Valley is a place full of hippies, intellectuals, leftists, artists, and leftist hippie intellectual artists. It is also a place of intense economic inequality, where uh, collapsing industries and collapsing schools exist side by side with extremely wealthy artists, creators, actors, and intellectuals. It's a bit of a melting pot where people come together and have lots of different contrasting ideas. One of the centers where these conversations happen is the Omega Institute for Holistic Thought and Development in Rhinebeck, New York, which emerged in the 70s from the ideas of Pierre Thiard de Chardin uh, and uh, Inayat Khan. Uh, and at this place, a pair of creators named uh, Howard Moody and Brian Allison, based on the play work of Fred Donaldson, developed something they called the Adventure Game Theater in 1985. And the, they ran this as part of the Omega's family camp summer camp programming. And the generation of kids who grew up going to this spun this out to create Wayfinder. And things began to evolve from there through online communities, the forums, and now Facebook. And an interesting thing that happened was because we need new games all the time because we don't repeat games generally. We don't rerun games, and the games are always standalones. They're always new worlds to create. It meant that we needed a constant source of new content. So people had to create. We had to have new game writers, and that meant you had to be creative. You had to innovate. We had to iterate on our designs and get more and more inventive, push the boundaries of what this medium that we were treating in isolation was capable of. And so things got weirder and more artistic. You had people running LARPs in their backyards, and we treated, we started to teach the next generation. And that's actually where I got my start was, this is me in high school, uh, at my high school, running LARPs out in the woods for my friends out in California because we couldn't all afford to fly to New York for this camp. So what is the point of me telling you all of this? How did a LARP, totally isolated, on the other side of the ocean, with decades of separation, evolve to such a similar point? The answer, I don't have. But I have some ideas and some theories. I wish I could tell you a nice, clear, concrete answer. I can't. But I've given you some of the context. I've talked very little about the designs of what actually happens at Wayfinder Games. But I've given you some of the context that these people came from. And a lot of the context, a lot of the ideas, a lot of the people who were having input created similar output. So I want to talk about the idea of community. We talk a lot about community in LARPing. We talk a lot about the fact that we have communities. And I want to talk about the idea that there are multiple levels of community at play that we have to consider when we're considering where are the ideas for our LARPs coming from. So very briefly, the idea of community around play, the meta community. So for Wayfinder, this is the Hudson Valley. For all of you, this is the Nordic countries. This is the broader world in which we operate our LARPs in, the largest scale. Next, there's the community of play, where the conversations around the LARPs are happening. In this case, at Wayfinder, it's at Omega, at camp itself, and on the forums. For all of you, it's right here. It's LARPers BFF and other Facebook groups. These are the conversations where the LARP and the design iterate. And then finally, you have the community at play, the actual players, or the campers in our case. So these three layers of community interacting are what drive innovation and are what drive creation. And when you consider these three levels interacting with each other, that is where you understand how the similarities emerge. Similarities at the three levels of community result in similarities of the game, result in similarities of the sense of what is actually happening and the feeling of community. And that is why when we come from environments that have similarities at these three layers, when people from Wayfinder come to Nordic LARP, it feels like coming home. It's a pretty magical thing. And camp is happening this summer. And we welcome international children. So if you have young people, send them to New York. It's a wonderful place to grow up. It's a wonderful place to live. And yes, I realize America is a scary place to send people right now, especially your children. But we will. <laughs> <laughs> but we will do our best to take care of them and raise them in the Wayfinder tradition. Thank you all so much.